Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Preschool All-Stars podcast. I'm Bethany Johnson, and today I'm joined by Lena Munez. How are you doing today, Lena? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. We are excited to hear what you have going on. But first, I always like to get a little background. So what was going on before you decided that you wanted to embark on this preschool journey? Well, before all of this got started, I was a I was in public education. I was a principal for 20 years. Oh, yes. I yes. Not, I don't think I've interviewed a principal yet. <laughs> Lots of teachers, but no principals. Yeah, yeah. So I loved it. I loved it. I was very blessed to be um, a principal at a preschool. Oh, nice. A principal at an elementary school. And wow. then I, the last three years, I was a principal at a high school and middle school. Wow. So, so you've done it all. Yes. Preschool all the way to high school. What was your favorite? You know what? Whatever uh, grade level was at the school at the moment. Okay. So, when I, okay. so when I was in, ele- I started on elementary school, in elementary school, I loved it. Mm-hmm. And then when they asked me to, um, that, to attach the element, the preschool, to our elementary school. I was like, and then I loved preschool. Oh (laughs) my gosh. Absolutely loved it. And then when I said, okay, I want to try something different. Um, I was a a director, a a business director for about a year. And then they said, Hey, we have a high school. And I'm like, (laughs) no, thank you. And they're like, we really need help. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll just go until we can figure something out. I loved it. Oh, I loved it. Great. Yeah. Great. So um, I loved high school, loved middle school, elementary, um, but I love my preschoolers. Yeah. They are, they're so adorable and everything to them is fascinating and yes. cute and interesting. Yep, totally. Exactly. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you were doing that for how long? Yeah, did so, you so I was doing that for 20 years. Okay. And then right before the pandemic hit, um, probably about two months before that, I was getting tired. I was getting tired of the drive. It was, it was like a three hour drive, like, you know, an hour, about an hour and a half, uh, two oh. and an hour and a half back. It was long. It was really long. And I, and we have four little ones. Oh, we wow. have four little ones and we would eat in the car, you know, eat breakfast in the car, eat yeah, dinner in the van. Yes. Day. It was a long day. And then as an administrator, um, I worked 12 Very months out of the there. year oh, and wow. whenever they had vacation, I worked. And then um, at that time I said, you know what? I, I, I need to remember their names. <laughs> I need to remember their names, what they look like. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to step away. I finished the academic school year. Um, I finished the school year. And then I said, okay, I'm going to start going into the, in, into the classroom. And that was when the pandemic hit. So then I was um, a second grade online teacher. Okay, and with, the as a, district? with the school district, okay. with the school district. And as I was doing that, my little one, I, at that time, she was four. She was like, why does everybody have a Zoom teacher? <laughs> why does everybody have a Zoom meeting? I don't have a teacher. I don't oh. have a Zoom classroom. And my heart broke. My heart broke because I thought, you know, she doesn't have anyone to interact with. And she was going to in-person preschool before all of this. Mm-hmm. So then I looked around and I looked around and I just couldn't find the right fit for her. So then I'm like, okay, I'll teach her preschool. Yes, love that. <laughs> yeah. So then I started setting up my centers and setting up activities and I found a passion for it. I found a passion for it. So then I started, you know, expanding and saying, okay, well, I'm going to teach one little class, mm-hmm. you know, and add her in so she could have friends. Mm-hmm. And then it just, it just rolled forward um, in that wow. way. Were you yes. still doing your, were you still teaching with the district when you were doing? I was the- actually, okay. Okay. I was. So I was teaching early in the morning and then, um, you know, I, I would teach um, her, um, you know, after school, she would be in my classes. And then in March of last year, all the teachers had to go back in person. Mm. And I wasn't ready for my own kids to go back in person. So I said, you know what? I can't, I can't go back in person. So I, you know, I resigned my position and I said, okay, this, uh, this side job is now my full-time gig. Mm. And I started uh, full, full looking to create that side hustle for it to become a full-time yeah. uh, full-time job. Yes. Totally. And is that when you found joy? 
Um, I didn't find joy then. It was a, a couple of months later. So that was like you in You had March. already kind of gotten stuff going on your own and you yes. were just kind of looking to, to expand a little bit, well, to expand a lot of it really, but yes. you had already, you, you decided this is what you were going to do before you even found joy. And then you found her and you're like, oh, okay, this can help. Yes. Me. Yes. So I had, um, I had, you know, I, I just started, you know, looking for ideas for preschool and that's where I came about, uh, Joy's, um, I think it was for her ad for her book. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, okay, well, I'm just going to get the book. I'm just going to get the book. And then I, and then I got the book and I'm like, Hmm, I'm just going to join the seven day challenge, (laughs) just the challenge. And then I mean, you're hooked with her energy, her, you know, her charisma, her knowledge, and just her heart, right? And um, so then in, I think it was October, it was in October, when I did my of this past year, I did my seven day challenge. And it was it was amazing. It was amazing. So that's when it was uh, this October, this past October that I that I found joy. Nice. Oh, okay. So how many kids did you have? What was your like setup before you found joy? How many classes or kids did you have going on? I had about, I think it was nine students before I, I, um, I connected with joy. Was this online or in person? It was online. It was online. Okay. Online. So my classes are, are online and I had about nine students before I did my seven day challenge. How did, and you during the, How did you find those nine students? Um, you know what? I'm trying to, oh, um, they were just students that I had from like a different platform that okay. I had worked on. And then I said, okay, I'm not going to do that anymore. And the parents, um, they, you know, they, they, they connected with, with me through like read alouds that I would do and mm-hmm. things like that. So then that's how I had those okay. uh, parents. Cool. Cool. And some of them were siblings of my previous uh, nice. students. Cool. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So yes. you had the nine and you were already kind of going and mm-hmm. then you found joy. And how did that, how did that change your program? You know what? That changed it, uh, changed it tremendously, tremendously, because it really opened my eyes to like the possibilities of going, you know, global, going yeah. global and having the resources to mm-hmm. do that. Because um, I was very lucky to join, um, I joined the, I purchased the hub, so the mm-hmm. website, yeah. um, which is beautiful and very professional and so easy to u- use. Um, so then from there, um, fast forward three months, I'm at 19 students. Yes. 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 And I'm, I'm growing. I'm growing. So currently I do preschool. Circle okay. time, mm-hmm. and then I just added, or I'm at the beginning stages of adding adding a uh, um, toddler circle time, nice, um, kinder a kindergarten program, yes, and then I already was doing tutoring, but mm-hmm. then it gave me the courage to really open up and cont- and grow the tutoring program as well. Absolutely. Okay, yes. so you got a lot to a lot going on to talk about. So yes, let's start with the preschool. Okay. Um, when, how often are your classes? um they I offer two day three day four day and five day okay. uh, Monday through Friday so I give the parents a flexibility of being able to choose a minimum of two days a week mm-hmm. or up to five days a week depending on their schedule on their budget and yeah. the classes are um for the younger students that are three years old they're 40 minutes And for the students that are a little bit older, about 45, 50 minutes. Okay. And are you muted or not muted? Do you have different, uh, is it like a teaching time and a preschool pals? Are you teaching the whole time? Are they playing games? Like, how do you run your classes? Is it just circle time? So you're you're teaching or do they interact as well? They interact as well. So they interact as well. Um, I, you know, I... I start off with a hello song and then I do an oral language activity. So whether it be through pictures or books um, or realia, so, or, you know, real, well, realish objects, you know, you know. Can you give us an example of what that would look like for us? Yeah, let me see. Let me see what I have. Um, So for example, I might show them um, some pictures of, let me think of one theme that I just recently did. Um, 
so for example, I might show them a, a scene, a winter scene. Okay. A winter scene. And then I'll ask them questions like, what do you think the weather is like right there? And what would you wear during that time? What's the weather like in where you live? Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll expand to maybe, you know, what are some things that you see? Well, let's play I spy. So we, so I start with, um, you, again, either pictures, a story, a song um, to, to kind of do like a question a question and answer period um, yeah, yeah. for just a couple of minutes to kind of get them talking mm -hmm. to uh, to have them share and then once they do that we get into our letter of the day okay awesome mm -hmm. and how many kids you have in that that one class like what do you cap your classes at for the preschool you know what i do um six students Okay, I and feel, that works I, for you. It does. It does. I feel like um in order to give them that that individualized attention, that small group feel, six is like the max max that I yeah. do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. That makes sense. So and then you have some kids that attend two days and some kids that attend five, like three, four, five. Mm -hmm. Do they pick which days or do you have like a Tuesday, Thursday option, Monday, Wednesday, Friday option, or five days? Or so, can they pick like I want to come on Monday and Tuesday? Is that how? So what I do is um, I have um, a class. So for example, I have one class that I have three kiddos that come Monday through Friday. So five days. Okay. And then um, I have- What time is the class? I'm sorry. It's at, uh, yeah, it's at 10 a.m. Okay. At 10 a.m. So it's at 10 a.m. Arizona time. Okay. Uh, so it's at 10 a.m. And then I have um, a group of three kiddos that come Tuesday and Thursday. Okay. And then two students that come Monday and Wednesday to that okay. same class. Yeah, yeah. If that makes sense, yes. Yeah, so mm -hmm. with what you're teaching, um, are you teaching like five different lessons each like each week? So you're teaching a different, or, or can you repeat some of the lessons on different days depending because you don't have kids that overlap on some days. Do you know what I'm at? You know yes, what I mean? yes. Um, so um, what I do five different lessons. Okay. I do five different lessons. I used to do it differently before, but then it was hard to keep track. I know. Right? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm just picking everyone's brain here as I try and get my, my figure out what I want to do with when I start up my online program again. And I mm -hmm. want to figure out the way that I can maximize my time the most. Yes. While still making sure that every kid gets, you know, what they need to get. So I'm just wondering how you do that. If you have some kids that come some days and not others. And see what I had, I had one kiddo that was coming to my early class mm -hmm. and then his mom wanted him to come twice a day. Mm -hmm. So then he would come to my afternoon class and I was like, Oh my, so, and he was fine. And you but then there were times I'm like, he would say, teacher, I'm, um, I, I did this already today. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yes. what I'm worried about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I wanted that variety. So then right. I decided, you know what? I'm going to do five different lessons. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're all um it's a week long theme. Okay. So then that way, if they only come, let's say Tuesday and Thursday, we're still on the same theme. Right. So um, they feel they're still um, a part of the group and that they haven't missed out because they heard some of our theme um, activities on Tuesday and then again, reinforced on Thursday. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So you do two classes a day. I do, um, I do one on... I do two preschool classes a day. Okay. And then I do two, uh, two tutoring uh, classes a day. Okay. And so are those private tutoring or you have multiple kids in that? And how does that work? So I do, um, I do, pri I do a common, I do both. So okay. I have a uh, one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Okay. And that's three times a week for 30 minutes. Okay. Um, and I do small group tutoring for students that are in kindergarten. And that's where the idea of like, you know what, I need to make this more into a program. Mm -hmm. And that small group tutoring is uh, no more than three students and also for 30 minutes a day. Okay. And mm -hmm. what age group are, is, are your tutoring students? They're young, they're kindergartners. So they're, they're five, six. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So are a lot of your kindergarten or, or tutoring students in general, are they going to public school already and they just need extra help or are they like homeschooled and you're one of their teachers? What do you market it as? Who are you, who's your audience that you're trying to reach? So um, one student is, um, a, you know, a student that for health reasons 
you know, is um, kind of goes to school part of the time. So I'm his, um, one of his teachers. Okay. And then another student, um, because he he was with me last year in a sense with preschool. His mom felt he was um, that he needed that he was ready to um, to gain additional skills. So okay. I see him after school. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just want to give everyone a sense of the different options that we yes, have. Yes. There's so many. There's so many. Yeah. You doesn't then, have to just pick one thing. You don't have to just pick homeschoolers. You don't have to just pick after school tutoring. You can pick, you know, you can gain a variety. Yeah. I actually have two students that go to, um, in one goes to an in person daycare. Okay. Um, and then the, the daycare teacher puts him on for our classes. Okay. And then I have another student who goes to um, all day daycare, and then I see him after after his daycare. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So yes. you got, yeah. And how are how are you finding these people? What's um, different strategy. You know what? I love Joy's strategy of the free class. Mm -hmm. Um. So then. I have that in my web on my website. Um, I kind of went back and forth, like, sh should I write that? Um, should I put a free week? Mm -hmm. But then, you know, it makes so much sense. Uh, families yeah. don't know, um, you know, me from any other person. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So um, I definitely have that, you know, that free week on my um, website. But the free class um, option, that free class post, has mm -hmm. really helped. Just. Um, uh, for parents to, I don't know if it's the idea that I'm a, uh, I'm, I'm a person, I'm human, and I'm like this big old, co big corporation, right, that yeah. is something that maybe people warm up to um, more quickly, or are more open to trying out versus again, like, oh, this big company where their yeah. child would get lost, and um, they don't even know who the teacher is, you know, in, in mi escuelita, my school, well, I have my picture on the post. It's mm -hmm. my picture posting the post. And I, I just try different things. Um, I'll, I obviously post on my um, business Facebook group mm -hmm. and on my personal profile. But then I also post on different homeschool websites that allow posting um, and um, neighbor, neighborhood um, mm -hmm. Facebook groups. Yep, yep. So there's a lot of... Um, not necessarily like the neighborhood app, but there's um like in, in the community where my children go to school, Garden Lakes Connection, they have a Facebook group and I post it in there. So mm -hmm. just finding different um, Facebook groups that um, have um, that target families with young children. Okay. Yeah. That, yeah. Okay. Yes. Totally. Yes. Wow. Awesome. So what would you say your five-year plan is for this business what are you looking to grow it into and also two-part question do you have a niche that you market as your as a program as a whole mm -hmm. um my my niche I kind of went back and forth um but my niche is Spanish and steam okay, okay. Spanish and steam yes okay. um and my five-year goal is to really grow the business Always remembering though my why, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. my why, right? Because the whole reason I got into this was to to be able to um, have more time for um, for my children, for my family. But um, I'm so excited because the you know whenever I think about adding a different feature to the program, I think about okay, as a mom as a mom of a, uh, of a four-year-old, what would be helpful to me? So like, for instance, um, my little girl, she can, um, if I let her, she can get lost on, on her tablet, right online. Yeah. Um, so then as a parent, I'm thinking, how can I expand my program to be able to support families in different areas? Uh, for me, that was a big concern. So then I developed a virtual classroom. Mm -hmm. um, that is part of my bundle where parents um, um, can feel safe knowing like, okay, if I give my child teacher M's virtual classroom, all the links in there are safe. They're not going to go to YouTube. They're not going to go to, I don't know where they're going to go that. to. Yes. Yes. Links you have on there. So I have read alouds. Mm -hmm. I have um, me singing songs, mm -hmm. um, me singing songs. I have um, boom card games that I created that are based off of the skills that I'm teaching that week. Nice. Um, I have an art lesson in there, um, like a 
really um, child um, appropriate directed drawing lesson. So something that they'll feel successful um, drawing. Yeah. And I love when the kids show it to me the next day in class, like or during the week. Awesome. They'll be like, look at this. And I'm like, oh my goodness, did you write your name? Because you're an artist. Yeah, um, I love that. Yes. What platform is that on? Do you do that on the hub? You, it's one of the pages from there? It's actually, I create the virtual classroom on, um, on Canva. Okay. And you can upload it into the hub so families could have access to it. That's a really great idea. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Then you're just offering, wow. So, I mean, so much. Then they can yes. feel good about their kid going online, learning stuff. It's with someone they trust, which is you. They, mm -hmm. That's awesome. I love that idea. Yes. And then it's, it's, um, it's at, um, it's, school at their schedule, right? Mm -hmm. When they can, um, when they need it, and it helps to, and it's reinforcing again, the skills that we're working on in class. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's great. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I yes, love that. Yes. Yes. Yeah, awesome. Okay. How much do you charge for preschool? So I charge, um, $15 a session, but I do charge, um, per month, per okay. month. So okay. for, if a child comes twice uh, a week, it's $120, okay. they, but they get so much because uh, as part of the, um, the value that we want to provide to families, um, they get that virtual classroom that I was just telling you about. They get um, a yoga video once a week and that yoga teacher um, does an enrichment class, once a live enrichment class once a month. Um, and how do you wait pause there that's cool yeah yeah how did, you, how did you set that up is that a partnership that you know a yoga teacher that yes you yes Ooh. so one of my dear friends she's a certified yoga instructor for kids nice. and um and I love how she teaches um I've taken my kids and she does yoga classes for kids mm -hmm. so then I set up a partnership with her where she you know she sends me uh, one video a week mm -hmm. And then once a month, she actually comes to the live Zoom sessions, yes. which is great because then the kids connect uh, with her. So mm -hmm. I think it was about two days ago, uh, one of the little girls was saying, I saw Miss Angela. And I'm like, because she lives in, my friend lives in Arizona and she lives in, um, in Michigan. And I'm like, she goes, <laughs> yeah, in yoga class. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I so, love that so much. Yes, oh. yes. And I and the same thing for our music and movement class. Mm. So Miss Brenda will send us one video once a week. And then once a month, she'll come live to our Zoom classes. That's so cool. Yes. Once so once a week, we have a live enrichment class. Okay. And those are all your are, other classes pre-recorded? They're so they're all the they're live. Okay. Um, but I also um, have um, th uh, pre-recorded classes as well. So oh, parents okay. can purchase live classes, they can purchase pre-recorded classes, or they can purchase all of it. Mm. Yes. How, are, yes. how do your pre-recorded classes differ from your live? With my, in my live classes, I really focus on the theme, on building uh, vocabulary, on that social um, interaction, mm -hmm. um, on on student on really um, pulling in student engagement. And with my videos on demand, um, I focus on a, uh, on a particular letter, color, shape, um, color, sh let's see, color, shape, and letter, um, letter of the week. Okay. Yes. okay. yes. And awesome. we do art activities embedded through that uh, video. Hmm. Wow. So you're a busy, busy lady. I'm just trying to wrap my head around all the different stuff you offer. You offer a lot of stuff. You know what? I, I, I love it. I love it. And I think about, I feel like if I don't have enough time with the kids, Yeah. <laughs> so then I, that's where, you know, the videos on demand came in because I thought when we're in class, you know, they're sharing, we're talking about our theme, we're dancing, we're practicing, um, different, um, you know, standard based activities. Mm -hmm. But then I feel like, you know what, did we did we go over the shape today? Right, right. I'm like, we did a little bit, but not enough. There's never enough time to do no, it. Yeah, yeah, there's Every never enough time. Knows that. There's never yes, time. yes, yeah. yes. So that and then we also I also have um, a choice board. Okay. So the choice board um, is basically um, a list of hands on activities 
that the parents and families can do together mm -hmm. um, as a family to reinforce um, whether it be uh, the theme, to reinforce the theme. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, if we're doing um, snow and ice, there uh -huh. might be an activity on how to make snow yeah. or a science experiment in there. But then I also found that parents also want worksheets. Mm -hmm. So I gave that option. Look, here are some hands-on activities and here are some worksheets. Um, and that's part of the um, of the preschool program as well. Yeah, that I mean, you're offering a ton of stuff for that value. That's yes, that's yes, awesome. yes, yes. And do you put together like a welcome box or any um, anything that you mail to the families? You know what I I didn't this go around just because it was um, you know all new to me and I kind of said okay let's just start mm -hmm. but I am planning to for August for the new academic school year okay so um, I can, can I introduce my co-star your co-star yeah oh I love it hello this is Rex nice Rex. hi Rex hi. <laughs> hi oh I got something on my lips hold on I'm gonna go clean it okay I'll be right back. So, um, so this is Rex and kids, my, he comes to our class every single day. He's the silliest, cutest puppy that you'll ever meet. And he helps us learn and grow. So part of our welcome kit is, um, is going to be um, a baby Rex. So he has a lot of little brothers and sisters that really need us a, a, a wonderful home. And I know our kiddos would love to help us take care of Rex's brothers and sisters. So part of our welcome packet will include a little uh, a baby Rex. That's yes. super. I, I had to introduce him. I had to because he, yeah. he's been waiting really patiently here on the side. <laughs> oh, I love it. That is so cute. <laughs> wow. OK, so. Ooh, so how much do you charge for tutoring then? For tutoring, um, if it's one-on-one, -on -one, I charge, um, um, it's about uh, $30. Okay. Yes. And they pay that monthly as well? They pay that. Um, for my tutoring, I ask them to pay weekly. Okay. Yes. And yes. do you take so it's payments? $30 a session. So it's you take payments and everything through the hub? Yes. Yes. Through the hub. Yes. And do parents find that easy? Is that working for you with all your different, because you have a bunch of different tiers of payments then. Yes, I do. I do. And what I, I try to make it as easy as possible for the parents. Mm -hmm. So that way, um, but, um, but not to be biased, but the website is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> totally. I can't take credit, but it's, it's beautiful. I'm going to go check out your website. Yeah, go check I, it out. Go check yeah, it out. Totally it's, it, yes, out. absolutely. It's beautiful. Um, so then yeah, the parents find it very easy to um, to maneuver through the website and to get onto the membership um, site, especially like for the Spanish classes. So the um, they also have access as part of their program to Miss Ana's Spanish video. So yoga, music and movement, the Spanish class, the live classes, the virtual classrooms, the principals, um, and then besides everything else, right, um, that's incorporated into the preschool program. Wow. You got a lot to offer. I love it. I love yes. it. I can't wait to check out your website. I'm going to yeah, go. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's exciting. So uh, let's see, how would you say that the preschool all-star has helped you figure out what you wanted your program to be? You know what? It's inspiring because I see the ideas um, of what people are doing. And I say, you know what, would, would my parents want that? Would my, um, you know, would my preschool program um, um, would I be able to add more value? So right. then I hear ideas and then I think about, okay, how could I incorporate what I want to incorporate? And of course you do, right? Because they're all great ideas. Yeah. Um, and then just hearing what other people are doing, the encouragement, the encouragement to keep on trying. Um, because yes, I've been very blessed that my preschool program has grown, but then there's always times where you hesitate, where you doubt yourself, but then you just get back on and, and you look at the posts that the All-Star Sisters uh, put up and it gives you that idea, okay, every, you know, there's a group of phenomenal ladies that are going through the same thing mm -hmm. and that is encouraging. It is very encouraging, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. What would you say to any ladies who are kind of on the fence about starting their own preschool who were where you were just a little bit ago before you decided to start yours and who were thinking, maybe I can do this, but maybe not. I don't know. What would you say to encourage them? 
What I would say is write down your why, mm -hmm. write it down, um, keep that close by where you can see it all the time and know that there is a wealth of resources in the All-Stars program. There is a wealth of resources that you are able to go through this journey and you're not by yourself. You're not by the self and by yourself. And it is so worth it. I am so glad that I started this journey. Um, it's been a blessing and I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't change anything. Yes. Wow. Well, I, your program is like, so awesome. And I can't Thank wait to you. hear how it expands and grows Thank throughout the year. You. We will definitely have to meet back up next year for an yes. update episode so I can hear Absolutely. all about what you got going Absolutely. on. Absolutely. You Thank bet. Thank you so much for talking with me, Lena. I really You're welcome. It. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Good luck with everything. Thank you. If you'd like to have a success story just like that one, I invite you to join our preschool all-stars. It's my exclusive membership community where you'll get mentorship from me with weekly Q&A lives, support and guidance and friendship from hundreds of women on the exact same journey as you starting running and growing their preschools and my exclusive access to Preschool University, every training and done for you file that you'll need for every milestone on your journey to help you start, run and grow your preschool. We've all been there and we've got the exact same steps that you need to go through, but we do it all very quickly so that you don't have to waste time or money doing the wrong things at the wrong time. We'd love for you to join our Preschool All-Stars membership. Just go to preschoolallstars.com or click the link in the description to a immediately jump into Preschool All-Stars. Again, go to preschoolallstars.com and we'll see you there.